Hello everyone. Uh, this video is intended to replace the image stacks portion of my old uh, importing data into Slicer video. Um, so that's pretty much any data you're getting out of a micro CT scan. If you're interested in DICOM data, I'll refer you back to that video. I'm also going to start off by discussing a little bit of why importing data into Slicer can be tricky. Um, this is useful information if you ever need to troubleshoot, but if you feel like you've got it, you can go ahead and skip ahead uh, to where I start talking about the image stacks module. Um, but to start, let's look a little bit at how Slicer is actually loading data in. So, what Slicer does that's unique, at least uh, compared to most commercial software, is it completely loads your scan into RAM. So if you have a 32 gigabyte scan, which is what I'm going to be working with, it is going to need 32 gigabytes of RAM. So if you can't immediately see the problem with that um, and aren't familiar with what RAM is, RAM is basically the short term memory of the computer. So it's everything you are currently working on. Right now I've got a recording app up, I've got Slicer up, um, I had my, I've got Task Manager up to show you how much RAM I have, and that's all taking about seven gigs of my 32 gigabytes of RAM that I have um, available. So this is a pretty good amount, especially for a laptop of RAM to have. Some computers can have more. I've worked on computers that have up to 128 gigs of RAM. Um, a typical laptop is probably 8 to 16. So you can imagine if you're working with especially really big scans, you know, 32 gigs, 64 gigs, this can start to become a problem. And that is especially because um, once the scan is loaded in, if you want to do anything on it, you need a little bit of extra RAM so that Slicer can, you know, save maybe the markups you're making, or it can um, load the graphical interface for the module you want to work on, things like that. And this is why it becomes so complicated to work with, especially large data sets in Slicer. So I'm just going to show you real quick the old way I would deal with this problem. Um, by loading in this very large data set I have. So this is the old way of loading it in, where I would just add data, show options, uncheck single file. And then we can actually watch as this is going to jump. Okay, so now you'll see I've hit the limit of how much RAM is available on the computer. It's it's basically reached the cap of what I have available. And that means there's no wiggle room for me to actually do anything with this data now that it's been loaded into Slicer. So if you're having issues with Slicer crashing, this is often one of the reasons it can do that is if it's just all your, your data has taken up all the RAM and there's no more RAM left to do anything else. Okay, so you'll see it did actually manage to load it in. I can even navigate the slices a little bit. I don't know the specifics of the tricks it's doing behind the scenes to make that work, but it does. The problem is when I try and go to any other module, we'll try the volume rendering module, it's immediately going to freeze up. You'll see my loading circle come up and basically trying to do anything is going to be impossible. Okay, so there's two sort of immediate obvious solutions to this RAM limitation. The first is working on a computer that has enough RAM to handle your scans. The problem with this is that it can be expensive to get um, that powerful of a computer a lot of times. Um, and even if you have it, you know, some of these scans can be absolutely massive, so it might not even be enough still. Um, the other solution is, of course, downsampling your data. And that's kind of what my old walkthrough did, um, but in a very cumbersome way. And also, you might not want to be working on downsample data. You might still want to work on the high resolution scan um, because you need that level of detail.
So this new method that I'm going to be showing, the image stacks module, is a, uh, basically a really nice tool that lets you load in a data set, downsampled, crop to an area of interest, and then load in the high resolution, but crop to only that area of interest. So each time you're only loading in eight gigabytes or whatever is manageable by your computer, um, but you're still getting to work on exactly what you want. So let's go through how this works. First, you'll need to make sure you have the slicer morph extension installed. Um, this was really built for geometric morphometrics kind of stuff. If you don't know what that is, that's fine. But they've also built a lot of other really useful just user interface things um, with Slicer, including this image stacks module that I'm going to be showing. OK, so I'm just going to search for it because it's easier. And I'm going to go to the image stacks module. So first thing it's going to ask for is file pattern. I'm assuming you have an image stack, just a folder of TIFFs or some other image type of file. And you can select the first image in the stack. And what's really cool here is it's just going to tell you the size of that right off the bat. So this is how I know this is 32 gigabytes. Um, it also tells me the pixel size, uh, 2900 by 2900 of each of those images, as well as the number of images um, and the sort of bit scaling of those. Um, next, it's going to ask for spacing. So this is what the size of each pixel is, as well as the spacing between each image. Um, this one, I believe, is 19 microns or 0 0.019 millimeters, which everything Slicer does is in millimeters. Um, note that sometimes the Z axis can be different since that's the spacing between images, but a lot of times it'll just be all the same. Um, and then you can choose what you're going to name the volume you load in. So because um, I'm going to just load in a preview version, a very low resolution version, first I'm going to call this scan name preview. Um, I'm not worried about region of interest yet because I just want to see what the full volume looks like. Um, and then this is where you can choose the quality. So. Preview is like a quarter resolution, and then you have the options of half resolution and full resolution. You can also, if you really need to, like cut down on um, how big the scan is, you can also skip slices. So skip every one or two slice. I'm, I'm not going to do that. I don't have any need to do that. Because if you look down here, the output size of the scan, what's actually going to be loaded in a slicer, is 500 megabytes, which is much more manageable than 32 gigabytes. So let's load that in. OK, so now we can see the scan has been loaded in. And in case you're wondering what you're looking at, these are some limnoscion vertebrae uh, from my PhD project, which was a type of carnivorous mammal. Um, but I can I can browse through this. I can see the different parts of the scan. And what's especially useful is now, without any problem, I can switch to the volume rendering module and very easily render this in 3D without my computer crashing. So we'll render that Shift to this. And I'm going to switch to just a 3D only view so we can take a good look at this render. OK, yeah, If so this is still pretty good resolution at preview size. If I had loaded in the full scan, this would not be running right now. But what's really cool is now I can select if there's a specific area of this scan that I'm interested, I can pick that as my region of interest. So I'm going to do that by displaying the ROI or region of interest, and then just using these little handles to maybe focus in on this first vertebrae here. And I'm going to get it in as close as possible to this um, because this is how we're going to crop the full resolution scan um, 
down to a manageable size for Slicer. Okay, so I've gotten the full... Oh, there's still a little bit peeking out. There we go. Okay, so this single vertebrae is entirely in my ROI now. I'm going to switch back to that image stacks module. And now I can leave the same settings, still loading in that tip first, still the same spacing, but I can reload in the full resolution crops to this ROI that I've decided on. So let's call this Limno part one L1 since it's my first lumbar. Um, and I'm going to switch this to full resolution. And then I'm going to switch it to the volume rendering ROI. And note how it'll go from this 32 gigabyte resolution to a much more manageable 3.4 gigabytes. Let's load this in. And this is what I used to have to... I used to do essentially the same thing but with this module, it's a lot faster since you do it as you're loading in the data rather than having to load in the full scan and then crop. Okay, so the new scan has been loaded in. We don't see it quite yet because um, of my view, but I'm going to go in here and turn off the preview version. I could also delete it if I wanted and then go look at the um, slice of the high resolution version I look loaded in. So now we can see this is very high uh, resolution. Yeah, so I can basically do whatever I need to do on it now without having to worry about slicer crashing due to memory full problems. Um, finally, if I don't want to have to go through that process again, I can just save these files. So I could save the... Um, the preview as an NRRD. And if you remember from my last video, the NRRD is essentially saving all of the images together and the spacing information into one file. So it is very nice for loading back in. Okay. Um, and now that I've saved that data, I can just... I can easily reload in the crop version uh, from wherever I saved it. So I'll load in this L1. It's going to take a second to think about it, but it will still have not nearly the memory uh, issues that the other one was causing. And there we go.